Hello and welcome to this film which is all about nomenclature. This might sound like it's completely new but you know how to name ionic compounds and you know how to name covalent compounds. Nomenclature is just a system of naming and this film is all about a system of naming organic compounds. Hopefully by the end of it you'll know what branches there are in a molecule and you'll be able to base this on the longest chain. You'll be able to say how many branches there are and where those branches are found and if there's any double bonds in the molecule, you'll also be able to identify where they are with the name. OK, let's start off by looking at what we already know. And we'll deal with straight chains and alkanes, because we know a bit about alkanes already. When I say a straight chain, I mean all the carbons in the chain form one continuous chain. There's no branches coming off the chain. OK. And just by looking at these formulas, some of them I can tell must be a straight chain because I can only have two carbons in a straight chain. And same thing with three. With four is actually different possibilities. But if we're assuming that all these chains are straight, then we should know that this is called ethane because it's got two carbons. This is called propane. This is called butane. And this is called decane. Now, the names will change if the, uh, if the chains aren't straight, but for straight chain alkanes, we know how to name them already. Okay? Now, if you've got a straight chain alkene, things are a little bit more complicated because the double bond can be in different places. So what we've got to do here is to decide what the molecule would be called, but identify where that double bond is. Now, I've got six carbons in a row here, and here, and here. But as you can see in these three diagrams, the carbon-carbon double bond is in a different place. Okay. Now, in this molecule here, we could say that the carbon-carbon double bond is starting from the first carbon or from the one, two, three, four, fifth carbon. All right. We're going to choose the first because that uses a lower number. So whenever we're naming things, we choose the lowest possible numbers we can. Okay. This is six carbons in a row, so it's hex. It's hexene because it's got a double bond, and it's hexonene because we decided that the carbon carbon double bond started from the first carbon. Here, we could say it's starting from the second, third, fourth carbon, or from the first, second carbon. We choose the number two because it's smaller than the number four, and we end up with hexene. Still hexene because there's six carbons with a double bond, but now the double bond's moved. Here, it doesn't matter which end of the chain I start, I always end up on the third carbon. So this is called hex-3-ene. Okay? And in actual fact, sometimes you see these things written as 1-hexene and 2-hexene, etc. Um, but this is the way you really ought to be able to do it. Okay. So that's spotting where the double bond is. This is spotting where the branches are. Now, if you're going to decide effectively where the branches are, you have to be able to spot the longest continuous chain. Okay? Now, in this molecule here, I've got a continuous chain going along there. I've got a continuous chain going along here. And I've got a continuous chain going along here. Now, which of those chains is the longest? Well, this one is. And this one's got seven carbons in it. So I'm going to call this heptane because that's what I call alkanes with seven carbons. But in this molecule, there's a branch coming off the chain, and that's got one carbon in it. The prefix for one carbon is meth, so this is called methyl heptane. What I'm not doing just yet is saying where that branch is. That's the next slide. Okay? This chain here also has seven carbons in the longest chain. It also has seven carbons if you go that way, but it doesn't matter. Either way, you end up with a branch of two coming off that chain. So this would also be called heptane because its longest continuous chain is 7, but it's got an ethyl group attached. So that's ethyl heptane. This molecule here, drawn this other way that we've seen, where each of the points is a carbon atom, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 carbons in my longest chain. So this is another heptane. But this one, so there's my 7 carbons, this one's got a chain of three coming off that chain. Now, the prefix for three is prop, so this is propyl heptane. 
And remember, I haven't made any effort here to say where those branches are attached. I'm just saying how you name the branches. Okay? Because now we're about to look at how you say where the branches are. Now, if we look at three different molecules with the formula C6H14, here, the longest continuous chain is five carbons long. So this is going to be a pentane. It's going to be a pentane that's got a branch with one carbon in it coming off it. So this is methyl pentane. Now all I have to do is say where this branch is attached. And no matter which end of the pentane I start from, it's attached to the third carbon. So it's three methyl pentane. So here I'm not just saying what branches there are, but where they are, where they're joined to that chain. Here I've got another chain of five. Or I could equally well go for this chain of five here. It doesn't matter. No matter which way I do it, I end up with a branch of one coming off the second carbon. If I highlighted the other branch of one, that's also coming off the second carbon. Okay, so I've got a pentane again because there's five carbons in the longest chain. I've got a methyl pentane because... Um, <clears throat> The branch only has one carbon in it, and it's two methyl pentane this time because the branch is attached to the second carbon. Now this one here might look like we've got a longest chain of five as well, with a branch of one coming off the first carbon. But the person who calls this one methyl pentane has made a mistake because what they've overlooked is that this molecule here actually has a longest continuous chain of six. And if we spot that, then there's no branches coming off it at all, and this isn't a branched alkane, and so we just call it its straight chain name, which is hexane. Okay, so we've said what branches are there, where are the branches, now we've got to look at how many of the branches are. there are. So this combines all these things we've learned so far and brings in another level of difficulty. Let's just have a look at these two molecules, which are both C7H16, and this one, which is C8H18, spot the longest chain, first of all, okay? And I'm just going to choose this one because there's a number of different ones I could choose there. If I've chosen that one, then there's a branch of one there and a branch of one there. So this is five carbons in a row, so that's pentane. My branches have one carbon in, so they're methyl groups. How many of them? are there? Well there's two of them, so I call it dimethyl pentane, but I must remember to say where they are, they're both attached to the second carbon, so 2 comma 2 dimethyl pentane. Again, this molecule here has five carbons in its longest chain, I could have chosen those five carbons, it really doesn't matter. If you spot the longest chain, then the branches will always be in the right places, so to speak. Okay. Again, we've got two branches coming off this chain. Both of them have one carbon in. So this is another example of dimethyl pentane. The way in which this molecule is different is that the branches aren't both attached to the second carbon, but one is attached to the second and one to the third. So two, three. The person who called it one, two, three, four, so three, four dimethyl pentane, the only mistake they'd be making would be using a higher combination of numbers than is necessary. Okay, and finally this one here, let me just choose this longest chain of five, it doesn't matter which one I choose. Okay, I've got one branch here, another branch there, and another one there. So I've got three methyl groups attached this time. So this isn't dimethyl pentane anymore, it's trimethyl. Pentane, it's pentane because of the longest chain, it's five. Where are these branches now? Well, I could go for three and then four, four, or I could go for one on two, the other one on two, and the other one on three. So that's identifying where the chains are, not only that, saying how many there are. Okay, so we've identified what the branches are, how many of them there are, and we've also learned how to say where they are. Now let's combine all that with what we know about alkenes. Now when you're naming a branched alkene, it's important you name the alkene first, even if it's not the longest chain. Okay? 
So in natural fact, in all three of these examples, the alkene is the longest chain. But here it is with five carbons in. The carbon-carbon double bond is starting from the first carbon, as we've seen before. This is going to be called pent-1-ene. I always forget to put that second hyphen in. Okay, and this time we've got a branch of one carbon coming off the third carbon in the longest chain. So this would be called 3-methyl-pent-1-ene. This one here, again, the longest chain with the alkene in has got five carbons. The double bond is this time starting from the second carbon along. It's also starting from the third, but we choose the lowest number possible. So this is now pent-2-ene. And now let's have a look at where the branch is. It's on the 1, 2, 3, 4th carbon. So that's 4-methyl. Four, uh, four let's just insert that there. 4-methyl, or hyphen, methyl pent-2-ene. Now you might be wondering, why didn't I call that 2? And then the alkene start, the double bond starts from 3. Because I've named the alkene first, and then said where the branch is. Okay, so it's important to name the alkene first. Here, our longest chain is 5. Again, the carbon-carbon double bond is starting from the second carbon along, so this is another pent-2-ene. In this case, my methyl group is attached to the 1, 2, 3 carbon, so this is 3-methyl pent-2-ene. Okay? So that's all the different things combined there. Now remember, what we tried to do at the start, what we said we were going to try to do at the start of this film, we were going to try and identify what branches there were, what the longest chain was, that's really important, and also where the branches are attached and how many of them there are. And the final thing we were going to learn was about where the double bond is in alkenes. Hopefully, that all makes sense. The best way to check is to practice naming some molecules. If you've got any questions about it or if you think I've made any mistakes in this film that you'd like to ask about, then please post a comment on YouTube or come and ask me for some help.